Hello and welcome back to the Wargaming.net League Europe Season 5 Match Day 11. It's the last match day of this season, unfortunately. Going to cry a little bit at the end of this show, I think. Of course, oh. we won't be seeing that last match on Monday between uh, Momentum and Kasner crew because um, it is just one match. But it could be important. We have to wait and see. But today's game now is the DTQ versus Momentum. We just saw GG well play Trounce Utopia. Yeah, well, that was an amazing match and uh, a very one, good one from GG World Played. I, I can't say the same, actually, from uh, yeah. Utopia. I, I don't want to be mean. I was expecting a lot more from them. I agree. I think Utopia needs to step it up in that game. They just simply didn't. But um, what do you think about this match coming up? We discussed a little bit before the yeah. break how you know DTQ wants to be showing that they're a team that can still potentially um, be good in this uh, in this format and in this league and you know not go down to Silver Series with um, too much of a heavy heart. Yeah, well, I think that DTQ will actually show us a lot of uh, good action today because, as I said, they want to prove that they are uh, they are good. Uh, they they really deserve going into the Goldo series. And mm. as far as I can see, momentum they they really need to win this if they want to avoid a relegate direct direct the relegation direct relegation into yeah. the silver series. Yeah, of course, um eleventh and twelfth get replaced by the top two some serious series, which at the moment Ding, I'm sorry I got your name wrong last time. <laughs> um it's Ding and Strong Siema. Strong Not Siema. too surprising. I mean Ding is fantastic and a bunch of players I haven't really seen before and they're like seventeen to four at the moment yeah. in the Silver Series. So massive congratulations to them. Have you kind of like followed the Silver Series scene? You yeah, kind of I see how they've it. they've they've gone through the season. They've been doing very well indeed. Yeah, actually, they got in like in the third week, mm. and since then they actually won basically all their matches. They lost once against Synergy, mm. uh, which is uh, in third place right now. And as I can tell you, like some insight, <laughs> um, the. It's not yet over in Silver Series, and the battle is really close for the first two two places, which go uh, directly into the Golden League. So, no. uh, strong, strong Sema is now first place, second place is Ding. Okay. But they haven't played all the matches, so uh, they things still can, have a lot. Things can change still. Yeah. And, um, of course, 7th to 10th will be playing relegation matches against the uh, the, the other Silver Series, Silver Series team down to about 6th place. And the other teams, 1st um, to 6th. Um, actually automatically qualify for season six. So uh, that's what these guys are playing for as well. You know, a spot in the next season, uh, um, just um, an, a clear head thinking that they'll actually be there next time around. But these teams are now getting underway. Um, it is Pokrov is going to be the first map, I believe, um, it looks like. Uh, Momentum's picked up this map, and I think this is actually them on the defensive side and DTQ on the attacking side. So um, there's, there's a lot of interesting things there, but I mean, we obviously want you, your guys' opinions on this matchup. Who do you think is going to win? And that means, of course, Melly has all those answers and going to ask you those questions. So how is it going on out there? Absolutely. The, the, the news vote just went online, so people head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU and get yourself involved. And by doing so, you simply have to predict the exact scoreline of this match. I say simply, and it seems simple for the community, but not for me and not for us, uh, for you either, mm. because we're always wrong and you're always right. So <laughs> we need you, basically. So as said, take part in our challenge, vote for your favorite team, and then predict the exact scoreline in this matchup, and maybe get a chance to win one of five bonus codes. If you don't have a Facebook account, don't worry. Head over to Twitter and tweet us simply using the hashtag WGLEU. We accept your predictions over there as well. And that's exactly what you guys are going to do. Obviously, yeah, um, Melly, Melly will be uh, will be on your behind if you don't do that. That's all I got to say. She's um, she's a strict mistress. So let's head into game on our first um, matchup. Momentum is going to be in the north on the defense, and DTQ is going to be on the attack um, from the south. Well, yeah, we have Prokhorovka first map. Uh, we missed saying that. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I. I don't really like Prokhorovka. I think it's uh, we we need to find a very good map for the next season because this has not been a really fun uh, map to to watch. I agree. Um, only when uh, we've seen the cheesy tactics from EPS, that that was fun for me, but <laughs> and also for the viewers. But I don't know for you. Yeah, I think Prokhorovka is one of those maps that could have worked out, but it just simply didn't. As well, immediately Panzer Hunter is found by Road, so momentum. Um, getting themselves on the scoreboard quite nicely there. The VK2801, the first time we've seen on this map, falling 
Yes, and uh, they actually, uh, DTQ actually did, uh, n didn't do what they wanted to do with that tier 6, but they found out a lot of information and they can concentrate now on uh, the other base. Once you know that the opponents are uh, on the other side of the railroad, you can concentrate on uh, getting all the access points towards the other base. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of clean up that map and, you know, cut it in half, basically. Yeah. Railroad and then the uh, field to the left. So also uh, momentum, they have the hill, which is quite an important factor. You can get a lot of shots off across. I'm kind of surprised that one team hasn't, for instance, tried to get an artillery on the hill. And, um, you know, once you have the artillery in the hill, you can so easily hit everything on the map. It's it's almost ridiculous as you're kind of like dropping the shell on top of the tank and also get a lot more penetrations. Yeah, you, you know better. You, you've you played artillery a lot. I played a lot of artillery on Prokhorovka <laughs> as well, and I know that kind of works. Um, yep. Um, I'm really interested to see how artillery is going to progress. But Mr. Chef, team captain for DTQ, receives about 740 damage. So you can see the HP starting to whittle in the favor of Momentum, the uh, Latvian team. Um, and Mr. Chef receiving another one. So a bit of back and forth, but Momentum are definitely in the driving seat. What do you think they're going to do to try and um, close out this game? Of course, they're on the defensive side. They don't necessarily have to do anything. Yeah, well, uh, at this point, Momentum uh, doesn't have to do anything because there's no pressure on them from no from uh, DTQ because nobody's in the cap zone, the, the cap is not started. So it, basically they just have to wait for uh, their opponents to go into the cap first and then to to uh, get enough information so they know from which, which side they can, uh, they can uh, do their push and uh, reset or just kill all of their Opponents. Yeah, Manza and 505 have a little bit of a tussle there. Manza definitely gets away slightly worse. 222 HP, the final shell to land on him. He's down to 287, so possibly a one shot if he does lose HE on the uh, load HE on the M on the T51. But Rhodes going to come in. He's going to try and take advantage of Manza's early damage. And two versus one. I don't see how 505 can get out of this one. And Rube, surprisingly, the one to actually do the final damage right from the south there in the J area. So Momentum starting to claw their way into this map a little bit more. They have that right area, they have that southern area, and they seem to be kind of um, wanting to surround DTQ. Yeah, well, uh, they had the tank advantage, so they said, why not? Let's just try to, to do something with the, the advantage we have. So now they have really good positions. As you can see at the minimap, they are uh, covering all areas. Uh, they basically know exactly where their opponents are and they're, they're just waiting for them to peek. Once they peek, they can start dealing that, that damage, and in the end, it's going to be definitely a win for Momentum. Yeah, there's a couple more shells coming out road. It has to be careful, but Hyena has to be more careful. We have a Hyena attack onto him at the moment, and I think he's honestly gonna fall down as he does try and fall off the top of that hill. 200, 932 damage to total that actually hit him there, and that's the problem, I mean, if you do actually go on that top area of Prokhorovka from the uh, tree road, it's a good place to spot out. You've got some bushes there, but if you get spotted, it's almost game over as it's so easy to hit you. Yes, and now we are pretty much seeing DTQ in defensive positions. Nicolas back receiving another shove from Free Kill, I think. And, uh, oh, and another one, probably from the RU on from E1. But now it's just a, a game of uh, peekaboo. Whoever uh, gets the tanks killed faster Ooh. wins, and in this moment it's momentum. Yeah, momentum's not having any trouble right now. Mauser will be the third and maybe the fourth to fall. Kluji um, has to come off reload very quickly, but free kills just getting free shots onto him. Outrun also in that T37 in the M41 even now on reload, so he has to wait a little bit. Trakis does provide some covering fire, but. Um, as he comes off reload, he will actually finish him off. Hyuni is being found by Rube right now in that 251, and he's down to 168 HP. And now Zero as Bernagy finds the final tank from Utopia, um, from Utopia, from um, DTQ, and it'll be Menton to pick up that first yeah. round. Yeah, I, I can't say I we we didn't expect this. Once we've uh, we've looked on the minimap, when we saw how Momentum actually surrounded their opponents. Uh, they didn't really actually needed to attack, mm. but they still did it because they they want to prove that they were the best team. 
uh, in this round and they want to prove that they are the best team in this match. So they just went uh, ahead and won. Yeah, it was simple <laughs> stuff. I mean, after that VK fell, um, that's a tier six out and then they could kind of surround them and, and find their ways on. What do you think of, you know, the general performance of, of momentum in that round? Do you think their players are hitting their shots? Do you think they're... You know, the skills there, the kind of coordination's there from the team in general to win this match? Yeah, their, their coordination, coordination right now is very, very good. I think their players are on fire in this moment. And uh, definitely we are going to see them perform even better because now they are confident that they can uh, easily beat DTQ mm. from the first round. That's the confident. Uh, how, that's how confident you can get in the first round after winning 7-0. They didn't lose any tanks. Yep. So uh, from this point on, it's just up to them to keep the same pace and uh, really doing all their uh, shells towards yeah. their opponents. Um, it's going to be a, a big question. I mean, we have, you know, we had the charity picked up by Nicholas Black. It was actually a T37, not an M41, but also had the autoloader. So, you know, interesting stuff from both teams um, in terms of tank lineups. Um, I think, you know, we saw the charity yesterday on Prokhorovka. It worked out quite well, but this yeah. time... It's, it's a bit it's a bit of an off tank and you do actually yeah. have to hit those shells if he gets caught out it's pretty much done it's the biggest class cannon in the game but still um what can dtq do as a team to kind of um you know put aside that first round put aside that first loss and come back to actually win the second one well now in the second round it's uh i think they n really need to put pressure on the cap they mm. didn't do that in the previous round and uh, because of that they allowed uh, momentum to just do whatever they want on the map uh, spot and get gather all the information so they can actually push from one side or from another and get and to gain map control. And now in this second round, they really need to gain themselves the map control, put some pressure on their opponents. And in that moment, you know that you can control everything better once you put the pressure on the opponent. Because they, the opponent will not think the same like without having any pressure on it. On it. Yeah, let's head into game for our second round now. You've got to put the pressure on the cap, simple as that. You've got to force the movement out from the other team. Again, it's going to momentum to defending. They've got one round on the scoreboard. Um, DTQ on the attack. So, looks like at least the beginning. Both teams heading towards the middle. But interesting tank lineup choice from momentum. And DTQ, actually. More so DTQ. Yes, and they're going on the middle, and uh, Nicholas Black is rec receiving a lot of damage over there from the beginning. Not really good if you want to win this round. Yeah, Nicholas Black was just in that T69. I mean, it just wasn't fast enough, to be honest. And uh, now they got the information about momentum, where they are right now. And y you already see that momentum is uh, going back to defensive positions with those RUs in... Uh, a4, A5, and uh, it's really looking good for uh, DTQ right now. And Bouncer Hat Hunter manages to kill Outrun in the start of the match. I think Momentum should just kept that middle area a little bit longer. I mean, of course, they'd have to deal with the T69 and the uh, Pershing, but uh, the fact that they had to retreat so far is, is let um, DTQ make some great sniping shots, and they've also found Bernagy on his own unsupported. And, now, you need Mr. Chef want to kind of peek out onto him, make some pressure onto him, maybe even take him down. Mr. Chef could just peek over this hill. He needs a distraction from the south, though, to make that move. They, yeah, they actually can can kill Bernagy right right there. Two versus one. The T-32 is paying attention on the middle. Uh, they also they only need to commit some more tanks on the middle and some more action. But now we're looking, Mr. Chef and Hanui. How do you call it? That's Hanui going Hi. down um, into Bernagy, and I think Bernagy will feel the pain of Mr. Chef there, but Track is trying to do some damage in the middle. He's going one versus one against Malza. Um, and, uh, well, Memento trying to surround, trying to do something here, but 505, fantastic shells from behind. Memento squirming to get out of these bad positions. Yeah, well, the advantage is now in favor for DTQ. But looking at the HP right now, it's pretty even, even though uh, Momentum has only four tanks left and six on Deep Tranquility side. Where now, the DTQ is right now trying to get together and uh, Manza manages to kill Malz. That's, uh, that's getting them in advantage based on the HP right now. 
Mr. Chef with the spotting. I'm not sure if he's just going to go YOLOing in here. He's going to have to deal with the two five ones. Manza, though, easy shells onto Hyuni. No problem at all coming out from that one. Hyuni is, of course, of course playing the ball. Kluji does try and Rube, so at least a little bit of a reply. But momentum, they want to continue charging. Mr. Chef doing the best he can to get out of there. But easy shot there, easy kill there for free kill. Finds Mr. Chef. And honestly, I think that might be the final blow for, for Memento onto TTQ. Well... I, I don't understand. I, I, I just want to say, why, Mr. Chef? Why did you do that? In that uh, situation, that was not required, but now it's free on free, so it's still... 3-3, uh, yeah, and you've got the pushing there as well. Yep. And uh, looking at the HP right now, 1k difference between the Tranquility mom and Momentum, uh, that's, that's a lot, considering uh, that Deep Tranquility wants to win, needs to win this, this duel. And you've got momentum. Well, I guess one mistake I can see. Momentum is kind of splitting up. I think they have the advantage. They just need to find DTQ and take them down. But they're on the defensive side and they're just playing really defensively. They're sitting back, but three minutes left on the clock. Not sure if that's a great idea. Yeah, the, it's still a lot of time. And um, momentum, uh, Deep Tranquility has uh, enough time to catch them one by one and kill them. And Manza seems like it's the first one. Yeah, Manza. Easy shells there for Nicholas Black. And, uh, well, uh, as I said before, the fact that momentum split up, they're playing defensively, has allowed DTQ to get themselves back into this game. Uh, two minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock, easy stuff. But what do you think Deep Tranquility is going to do to try and find Roden Freako? Well, uh, they're going to they're gonna try to cap, definitely. That's what I would do. I would go into the cap and put some pressure on them and just waiting for them to come at me instead of me going towards them. Mm, true. They have the mobility, they have the speed. Uh, so it's it will be very hard for them to uh, to find them. But we've seen uh, this happen a few times before and where the Amex 3090 of free kill is, he can just swing around and decap from behind and uh, very hard to deal with him because he has a higher ground and also he's got a couple of bushes there. I mean, Rhodes are going to have a harder tr uh, time, but if you look at the HP from DTQ, I mean, Nicholas Black and 505 are potential one-shots. Yes, and uh, he doesn't have to go right now. He can still uh, take his time and go and fire from a safe position and just reset in the last second. That's, that's all they need, actually. Reset in the last second and uh, get some more time till uh, the clock gets to zero. And free kill is now. Ooh, free kill, Nicholas Black. He's got Bush right in front of him, so he can't actually be spotted. He has been spotted, but I think it's too little, too late. Road takes down 505, leaving only Kluji left. That's the guy who had the most amount of HP. Kluji now on reload in the T69, and I think, well, Road and free kill will be able to finish him any second now, and it will be Road to find the final player of DTQ and 2-0 now going to Momentum's favor, despite the fact that they look like they're on the back foot at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. well, this is the problem. They didn't cover. They had enough time, and they didn't cover all the access points towards the cap. They basically uh, dropped the map control towards Momentum, mm. and uh, Momentum just found the perfect position to come and reset the cap and win the battle. Yeah, it was... Um Good play of momentum and clearly showing them they're a good team by kind of getting back into that battle. 2.3k done there by Road in the 251. Free kill. I think he's been one of the MVPs for momentum. I think he's he's been fantastic this season. And actually, in this round, he was fantastic. Just yep. Looking at that position over there. Great, great was... positioning. They had that bush right in front of him, mm. um, which means he could get that first couple of shells without being spotted. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah, amazing, amazing play from free, free kill. But yeah. yeah. Uh, switch he's the MVP, so. He's the MVP of Momentum, it's yeah. true. He's been an MVP a couple of times, of course. The MVP for this week, and uh, well, I guess two weeks will be up um, very shortly. And I think, you know, if we're looking towards the next round, we now see DCQ on the defense and um, uh, Momentum on the attack. Uh, Prokhorovka, I mean, it's not a massively defensive bias map, but it's always slightly easier to defend full stop. How do you think things might change now? Well, uh, as a defender, you really have to uh, to gain the map control, mm. and uh, I think that's why they use uh, T32s because you can put it in one position and you can make sure that whenever the opponent pushes uh, towards the T32 and yeah. tries to kill him, you can uh, actually come from more sides and crush your opponent in the middle. 
so that's a T forty two is actually needed for this map. But uh, you need to spread a lot as a defender to get to get all the information you need, uh, so you know where your opponent is. So uh, I guess that uh, as an attacker, you just have to commit one base. Yeah, I think you just have to go all in at one point or just go evil panel yeah. squad and go all in on some tanks. So I think there's two options here for DTQ. Um, we're just getting the tank lineup sorted here. Um, type 64 brought out by Panzer Hunter. That's the first time you've seen that one. I haven't actually had a chance to play the Type 64. I've played it. It's, it? it's really good. Uh, it's got a good gun, right? Yeah, it has a good gun and also a decent uh, camo value mm -hmm. because uh, I, I usually use this tank to do the personal missions <laughs> okay. where it requires a camouflage net. Everyone is doing the personal missions right now, so yeah, true. we might as well talk about them. <laughs> yeah. Personal yeah. missions are I haven't got my I haven't got my Stug yet or uh, I haven't got my T fifty five. I want the T fifty five, I mean Yeah, I want as well. I, I want all the tanks. It's just They're so really much cool. object would be sick. It would yeah. be sick. Uh, no, it's it's amazing. Tank. Free it's tanks. An amazing tank. Free tanks. Yeah, well, everyone is doing the personal mission, so I basically use the Type 64 to get uh, the mission where you need to have a camouflage net and to have uh, a lot of spotting uh, damage from your uh, allies. So I think it's a I've good I've got tank. an E25 for that one. Oh, okay. Actually, I think that might be... It's Tier 5, right? Tier 5 and above? Or right. Tier 4 and above? Tier 4 and above, yeah. Tier 4 and above, yeah, okay. So basically, that's that's what I use the Type 60. For uh, 64. 64, sorry, for it's a, we have type 64 and type 62. Yeah, so. I know it's confusing <laughs> as hell. I know type 62, but that's that Chinese tier six medium tank and light tank, even. Meanwhile, in WGL Asia, oh, type, <laughs> yeah. type, type, type. <laughs> I mean, I've got it in my garage, but it's just I don't like it that much, not that much fun. Yeah. It's yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit questionable. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> you get some high matchmaking, I'll say that, and you can't really do much in there, but anyway. Back to this match here. We've got uh, DTQ on the attack this time, momentum um, uh, momentum on the attack this time, DTQ on the defense. So, I mean, the strategy of the two teams will, of course, change. 2-0 scoreline at the moment for momentum. Got tested in that second round a little bit, but they could come back, and they were a good team there. They kind of adapted. They survived. Yep. But as we do head into this next match, it could all change, and DTQ could start getting themselves back into this match. Yep, definitely. I'm waiting for them actually to go <laughs> to get back into the match. I want to see more from them. I know they can uh, they can do more. Uh, they showed us they can do more against uh, school bus. So certainly Manza, did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Manza is now on the middle, trying to do the initial uh, spot uh, with his RU251, very fast tank, and he m managed to spot the T69 and the T32 over there. And uh, looking there at momentum right now, they seem to want to go for uh, uh, the middle base. So, or not? <laughs> They're now rotating, thinking that there are two, there's a very good defensive going on, and they're predicting it very good right now, because. DTQ was actually waiting for them. Yeah, they would have been a little bit of yeah. trouble there. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been quite disastrous, I have to say. So that was a very good prediction from them, and uh, going on the other side is really the best call you can do. Yeah, they're rotating all the way around uh, south and going to be heading towards that base um, up on the eastern side. But, you know, I think with a T32 and a T69 pretty in pretty good positions in the middle, even if they do head towards their base, those two hull down tanks might cause them a lot of trouble. Yes, you you need you just need to put them at the at the rear road, those uh, T30, that T thirty two and that T sixty nine, and you can already see uh, DTQ uh, figure out figuring out as a WGL team they are that momentum is not going to come uh, on uh, that base, and they're doing the the counter movement. It's unbelievable how fast these teams actually catch on to the rotates from the others because, I mean, like in random battles and whatever else, it takes like <laughs> it takes like two or three you minutes. Bring random battles in this discussion, it, man. Two or three <laughs> minutes and, it, and people catch on to this, but these guys are within like five or ten seconds. They yeah. caught on to the fact what the other team is doing. It's, it's great to see. T32 gets spotted in the middle, and I think Momentum's going to be thinking, how do we deal with that tank? Do we go in and, uh, you know, do we put the pressure on in the cap at this point? Yeah, well, that's... That's what they should do right now. But I honestly think that a team that is going uh, for this base can can't actually win all the time if the opponents, if the defenders are playing it very well, because you have so many uh, ways to 
to uh, decap and just play for time that it's just it makes just too easy for it it just yeah. it's just too easy for the defenders. Yeah, I'm blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Mr. Chef actually only received one shell. About six of them headed his way. So some of the sniping problems there for momentum. Maybe not aiming down as much as they should do. But um, momentum's doing a good job just fending off uh, DTQ. Um, the Hungarian team, Panzer Hunter in that Type 64. It, it looks like a hull down tank, but I don't think it has much turret armor to play around with. Definitely not. And. Uh it's he's pretty much he was pretty much alone right here and Rube uh, will try to to kill him but the 1390 came in support and he got punished for that mm. 580 hp about the same as the other tier sixes i'm not sure exactly why panzan is playing this one so far i guess it's for the one line um spots there because yeah. as you said the camo value is pretty good on that one uh Kluge, um trying to test uh, mr chef actually finding outrun up north in the 5916 um, so, at least for the start, it's going to be um, DTQ doing, um, getting taken down a little bit. But they have found some good angles on Taru, taking three or four shells. And uh, that's the hull down tanks coming to their own 666. But Rube getting away safely. The question will be, does um, DTQ actually decide to head over and finish that tank off? They shouldn't. They shouldn't head over because uh, uh, Momentum is basically waiting for them to do that mistake. They have a lot of tanks committed to that side. You can actually see some more tanks coming to help uh, Rob there. So they do it anyway. <laughs> they do it anyway and they get punished. Uh, Panzer Hunter falls. Bernagy falls as well, as you said. Uh, that was a big mistake from them. Um, but Momentum actually heading over, making the mistake. And uh, it's going to be another big one as uh, Robe almost falls. And he actually does. Hayuni finds him very nice shells from the side there, leaving only Trakis and free kill in the T69, the MX 1390, trying to do as much work as they can. He has to try and reverse to get out of there, and he just about does it on reload, so about 20 seconds left on that one in the T69. He's got support from behind from free kill, but it's not going to do much. Even gets Amaract, which is going to increase that reload ever the, ever slow slightly more. And 505 does that finish, uh, final kill, leaving only free kill in the MX 1390 to try and make something of this game, but he's got so much to do, and uh, well, I don't think he's going to manage it. No, definitely not. And personally, I liked uh, how DTQ managed to overcome in the end momentum and the free kill. Yeah, receiving one shell right now. He's trying to pick up Maus and getting another kill. But Mr. Chef denied that one for free kill, and DTQ won. Yeah, DTQ easy um, win there. I think it was more momentum than mistakes, in my opinion. I mean, DTQ. Good job of the way they use the T69 in the middle of the T32. They could just peek out and make the shots down there. But why do you think Momentum committed so much down south? Well, I personally think that they should have just put some pressure on the cap. The The best thing that they should have done in this situation was just uh, put one tank to spot, to proxy spot, mm. and uh, keep some tanks on the hill that, like they had and just put pressure on the other side of the of the map towards the cap. Out and instead they decided just YOLO over the yeah, train tracks. Like I think uh, uh, they thought that uh, there w there are only two tanks over there and oh, it's easy kill for us to get those ta two tanks and to get gain the advantage. But mm. uh, the communication of DTQ was really good and uh, the coordination was surprisingly better this round. So that in the end got them the win. Yeah, great play by D Tranquility. Um, finally putting their their mark on this game a little bit, picking up around two to one. I mean, it's still in favor of momentum, of course, but at least that first round on the attack has gone um, their way. So they have another opportunity now to make something happen. That's momentum, um, and I think they'll be learning from mistakes. Clearly, they seem to be a little bit inexperienced um, this time, but uh, just waiting for some of these players to get on the way. Lineups coming in again. Mixture of AMX 1390s, 251s, 5916 play by Outrun. No real surprises. And despite the fact that Prokhorov got such a big open map, artillery is not picked up. Why do you think that is? Well, most teams prefer uh, the the fast lineup, mm. the fast fast setup. Uh, they can switch around very easy. As for taking an artillery on this map, it means that you have to commit for one side. It's the same like if you pick five heavy tanks. 
if you really if you go on one base then it's clear that you won't be able to switch to the, the other base in a very low amount of time and time is the essence in uh, in this new format so <laughs> basically i think that's the reason but if you pick up very fast artillery then oh and you also have to defend it yeah, you have so. to defend it. You have to put like a tier eight tank there yeah. just to kind of be a sentry. Yeah, we uh, saw that at school bus. Yeah, we saw it at school bus. We saw even DTQ. I mean, these guys are picking up artillery a lot on this map. Don't seem to be doing this time around. <laughs> I think Panzerhunt was even that player, um, but clearly not wanting that um, against momentum, trying different things. Um, it's worked out at least once for them. Charity have been picked up by Manza. Honestly, I think it's a good pickup. I think it's pretty good. Um, and if you look at DTQ's lineup, a lot of AMX 3090s, a lot of 251s, it's, it seems to do, seems to be quite um, the good counter to those ones. So, you know, looking at that first round, what do you think uh, uh, Momentum has to change to try and um, take this one? I think I think they should put some more pressure on DTQ. They actually tried to do uh, one on one. Uh, I think. Due to their confidence after winning the the previous round, they thought, oh, okay, we're better than them mm -hmm. in skill. So doing individual uh, fights might get us on the advantage side. Uh, so they basically tried the same in the in this round, in the previous round, and unfortunately they failed. So what what they have to do right now is to gain map control and to put some pressure on the opponents. And after that, just cover all uh, entries. It, it, it almost sounds like CSGO. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, it's because it is very similar to CSGO. I mean, it's pretty much this pretty similar game, actually. Um, kind of like Counter-Strike with tanks, I think. It's a good way of looking at it. Just a little bit more oh, brainy, oh a little less twitch. Oh my God. So uh, here we go. Um, heading to that second, second game at the moment. The score is 2-1 to momentum. They won twice on defense. Now DTQ picked up one on the attack. Um, still the first map on Prokhorovka. It's going to be our last round on Prokhorovka. So, um, well, at the moment, DTQ has everything to do if they don't want to go into that second map at a 3-1 deficit. So let's have a look at what's going on. Kluji, um, Trakis, and uh, the rest of the players of Momentum now heading towards the right side. Um, and I think they're going to be trying to go for that cap, second cap straight away. And that's a very good call because it almost worked. But looking at what DTQ is doing right now, they might be uh, be surprised if uh, if momentum manages to get in very good positions from the beginning. Oh, he, Trackers is in so much trouble. He's got caught out in the middle. He's just got to stop, wait, and go unspotted as the first couple of shells go in. I think DTQ has a good idea of where he's gone. The question is, how long will it take for the rest of the team to head up on that hill? Once they're on the hill, they can actually get some good shots down onto DTQ. But at the moment, Trackers is kind of tracked in that one place. Yes, and now that DTQ has the information, they they know that momentum is on this side as well. They will try to to do uh, some spot on the hill and just uh, allow their uh, their teammates to do the sniping from uh, far away. Unbelievable that track is actually tries to make that shell um should have probably aimed that one a little bit more, but uh, it is trackers versus the rest of the team. I think the hill's coming into play a little bit more. Um, and at the moment, no damage really heading the way of both teams. They're kind of struggling to connect the shells, kind of struggling to, to penetrate. But what do you think Momentum should do on this hill? Just charge off? Definitely not. They should just wait, pick, try to pick and shoot, uh, prove that they are very skillful players. And that's basically what they need to do. I also saw uh, a tactic, uh, as you said, to push over the hill uh, on WGL and A. Uh, and that totally failed because you get uh, very exposed once you get off the hill. Mm. You can kind of win in that initial engagement, but then it kind of goes downhill literally very quickly. Yep. Um, but Trakis does get found on the T32, and that's a problem. You know, they have to make a move at some point, and I think the only move they can make is actually heading off that hill. Bernard, he keeps on peaking. Manza does as well, and he's going to have to do some damage in that uh, um, charioteer, and I think he's just going to peek over. He's just going to find a 505, and he's got the timing perfectly as 505 is on reload. An outrun finds him, um, and uh, actually it's uh, momentum just to... Uh, start to do some real damage towards DTQ, but DTQ are holding on. They are going to head up as well. Road, the second one to fall, but free kill in response. Yes, and we see already a lot of shells flying over there. It's on a free on three over here. No, it's a free on four, two on four right now on the hill. And Bernadine and free kill are the.
only two uh, players from went to left on the hill. Manze is trying to come uh, around. Might be too late as DTQ is pushing now on the hill. Bernucci is very low HP. Gets picked up by Dr. Lapus over there. And Manza is the only one alive right now from Momentum. Yeah, I think he's going to try and peek, try and hit Kluge, but doesn't manage to. He's heading up the hill, even with the Charioteer, even with the Hesh ammo. I don't think he's going to manage to pick up three tanks unless he does play out of his skins. Kluge peeks. Manza gets the first shell, though, and it's going badly wrong as the first shell he just tries to make doesn't connect, doesn't penetrate. Dr. Lapa's not making that same mistake. He's actually going to go for the Ram, but Nicholas Black will be the one to find him. And that's the last player for Momentum to fall as DTQ do pick up the second round. What went wrong? Well, they tried to get a heal with... They had the tanks, but going uh, from the lower ground to the higher ground uh, is usually not a good idea. Mm. That's what DTQ tried to do, and it didn't work out as they thought it will. Yeah, but, um, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the match how it wouldn't have been a good idea for Momentum to put off, push off, but I think there was a point when they should have done it because... Um, they lost uh, the T32 trackers below. He was always going to be dead. Like, he was going to be dead as soon as yeah. he was spotted in that position. It d you know, DTQ even knew it. And then they had Manza down there as well. So they basically have two tier 8 tanks out of the game. Yeah, yeah, you're right. At that point, yeah, they should have. Uh, but they just uh, waited too long mm. and uh, gave uh, DTQ the, uh, enough time to gather all their strength and tanks to go uh, on the hill and crush crash momentum man. yeah you're right yep yeah it was an interesting battle but the scoreline is two to two quickly your opinion who's been better this uh, match so far momentum or dtq i think i think it's even right now but uh, i liked how momentum started mm. and uh, i honestly think they will win this match yeah i'm actually agreeing with you on that one i think dtq though with a couple of wins they have started to slight the favor slightly towards them so that's how it's going. That's our opinions, but we want your opinions, of course. And uh, Melly's the one to gather them. How is it going out there in the uh, wondrous world of social media? Well, people at home can't really decide where to put their money on. It's uh, well, the vote is slightly in favor of momentum with 65%. And um, if I look through the votings and numbers, they really can't decide if it's going to be a close one or a clear one. So it seems like everything is open. People, tell me. Just tell me. Use the hashtag WGLEU over at Twitter and tweet me. What's on your mind? Tell me what you predict for this matchup. Is it going to be a close one? Or will maybe one of the teams just stomp the other one on the second map, which we'll be seeing in a bit. And um, yes, that's my task for you. Excuse me. And of course, follow us on Facebook. And actually, there's the voting where you can participate to get maybe code or yeah be be one of the lucky five first winners and um yeah for the next vote which will be online right before the third matchup of tonight which is not the last because we have four matches today and we'll go on until the second map starts and my, well my Good advice for you, let's say that way. Get your votes in as early as possible. Some of the matches aren't really predictable, so just have a wild guess, and maybe you're lucky and be the first, be, be one of the first fives to uh, actually win something, because the earlier you get your predictions in, the better your chances are. And um, yes, I think we have a video waiting for us, and it's about... The Grand Finals. The Grand Finals have been announced last week, if I'm not mistaken. We know the location. It's Warsaw. Well, um, the World of Tanks League will be back in Warsaw. And it will be tw uh, the 25th to 26th of April, the weekend. So if you can make it, you should better try to, to go there and see what's going on. Because we have a little highlight video for you about I guess it's uh, day two because we saw day one yesterday. So have fun with the highlight recap of the Grand Finals. Вы не выезжая. Два в два в центре карты, на котором получает прострел от Т-32. Вот теперь Т-32 очень много решил. Теперь главное фокус. Кирилл смотрит не на тот танк. Блэк выбегает. И они разделились. Китайцы разделились. Тут получают Блэк дважды пробитие. Подтянулись остальные силы вот, фнатиков. Вот, вот, все. Зарядились парни. Идите сюда. Начинается на Катрон. Гуслить нужно. Кунту не отпустить. Тут же Блэк Кроус. Черный Ворон. Куда ты пришел? 
Кирилл выезжает, забирает дальний танк. Отличный минус, отличный минус. И у Блэка здесь шансов, шансов нету как таковых. Это 3-0. Но ну что ж, интрига в матче. Я, я... Два... Подожди, что, еще, еще вот он... Правее, дружище. А, вот все смотрели вчера матч, проверили этот угол. Да. Ну что, успеет? 12. Не успевает. Успевает. Не успевает. Не успевают. Да успевает. Першин. Он заряжен или нет? В засвете кто? В засвете Першин, да? 90. 3 секунды. Вот он подъезжает. Не успел. Не успел. Well, let's see if he can do anything here. He's going head first. Toggy holds his place. Nice work coming out from Arate there. But look at the clock. 10 seconds to 14. This is so close. Resets coming in left, right, and center. 10 seconds left. Nias Pizzoni now wants his chances. He's going to come through. Find Sod. Take Sod down. That's another reset. Four seconds left. Lemmy Train seconds away from the victory here. One second. Lemmy Train have done it. They're moving forward once again. Понеслась. Давай, Махач, нам наконец. Рино в засвете. Два промаха по Рино. Повезло ему получать один урон. Но он успел. Уехал, уехал дальше. Хорошо. Ну там Эл, куда он влетел в центр карты? И это дача Элла. Минус 13 минут в начале игры. Зачем он полез сейчас? Эл. Очень сильно подставился. Ну и в принципе можно говорить 1-0, если сейчас не произойдет. Карман. ПК. Карман следующий уходит. Ну, посыпались. Наглый, наглый лезет, но тут же подъезжает Джек, начинается драка. Джек пугает Бэтмена, Бэтмен на свете подтягивается, Фрикшин подтягивается на Гатрон. Тут Бэтмен же начинает уже получать здесь 69, может хорошо отработать, прикрыть Бэтмена. Но Бэтмен, по-моему, уже в фокусе, по нему пытаются отработать. Посмотрите, какой размер с арендами прошел. Джеку, Джеку нужно быстрее выезжать, постоянно фокусить Бэтмена. Нужно сейчас Бэтмена добрать, у Бэтмена мало хп. Он двушотный буквально, но он идет на, на атаку. На Гатрон получает, получает вся команда. Фнатик начал больше очень много урона, забирают Джека моментально, вот он зря вылез. Контратака удалась. На Гатрон ваншотный можно забирать, можно еще делать счет 2-1, но больше утесов нету, извините меня. Вот таких бы нам побольше, картей. Ой-ой-ой, что делать с перстком? 69 сейчас заберет. Ломают. Ой, как повезло. 66 кп, да все равно добили. Еще ну взгляну я. Бэтмен еще поиграет. Почему не говорит, я доберу? Еще поиграем. To the way this map plays out. So Wait a minute, though. one guy is getting focused down. 214, he's down. That was amazing. Focus fire from Fnatic. But Friction's getting some return fire as BVP Super Friends are on the offensive. They gotta get Friction down. He's down on one more hit. Batman gets that kill and takes him down. And Hugo Maximus now in a lot of trouble as well as BVP Super Friends come in full speed. But there is another tank on one one more hit and he's down. But that's another kill for BVP Super Friends. So it's now down two tanks against just one. Fnatic are in a lot of trouble. It's three. Max HP take. I say Max, but Nagatron takes a hit. And now he's in trouble. It's Hydrex still got three shells left. Two shells. One more. He will not be able to get the kill unless he puts him on fire. And Jackie's and he just about doesn't. reloaded. Jackie's reloaded, but he has to get out of there. But wait, Batman again. He gets the kill. He goes for the ram. No, he decides instead to shoot and turn. He misses the shot. Jackie's reloaded, but Batman's at max HP and able to get out of there. What's going on with Batman? What's going on? He's commanding his guys. He's going to get out of there. He's going to get out of there. На Гатрон ей избивать базу. Да, его 17 нужно секунд. 16. На Гатрон идет просто сбивать захват базы. Сейчас может сделать Пустик, минус. Просвет. На Гатрон. Промах, промах в ответ. Убивал на Гатрон, он не сбивает захват базы. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Филиппинцы выигрывают Тратик. Они выбивают их. Они их выбили. Бэтмен смог. Что творят филиппинцы сегодня? Well, if you well, if you followed the grand finals last year, Batman was a story on its own. And Robin, actually, absolutely one brilliant brilliant person and player of course. <laughs> Because otherwise they wouldn't have made it to the grand finals, right? Because two teams from every region qualify and also there will be two wildcard teams which will be announced later but I think we'll be, we're ready for a second map so I won't keep you for too long have fun <laughs> yep we're just about ready to get underway into our second map at the moment the score if you missed it is 2 all. the game is of course between Deep Tranquility and Momentum Deep Tranquility fighting to stay out of those automatic relegation zones Momentum also pretty much doing the same and also trying to get up further up the uh, the leaderboard to try and yep. get away from the top teams from Silver Series. But um, next map's going to be Steps. We saw Prokhorovka, but this map changes things up a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm really eager to see how uh, how DTQ is going to 
to uh, do on this map because it's a decisive map for them. Uh, they really need to to get back on the track and uh, win some runs in this map to get <laughs> do some. Uh <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, I uh, couldn't say it better myself. To all, it could have gone both ways in the first one. We saw momentum would kind of run away with it, but uh, DTQ have just seemed to have you know, picked themselves up, got themselves out of that ditch they were in at the first two attacking rounds and uh, put two on the scoreboard themselves. So in the south on the attack, it's going to be momentum. And in the north from DTQ, they're going to be on the defense. And we already see DTQ committing on the middle of the map where Alcoran is with three tanks, four tanks, uh, if we count the T69 as well, but we have three light tanks going directly for Outrun, and Ooh. Outrun receives one shell over there, 250 damage, and he might as well be dead if they manage to connect all the shells, and Doctor manages to win this duel against Outrun. Very short one. A nice play by Doctor Tour, not too easy for him to hit the shell on the side, but he does do it. But look at the kind of positional play Momentum now has. They have the entirety of the right side and as an attacking team, that's quite rare. That was due to Deep Tranquility's very unusual start through to the middle, but how do you think DTQ can actually break into Momentum now? We already see the two Bulldogs up in the north going on the RU251. That's definitely the best way to start their uh, their comeback in uh, their defensive positions and Panzer Hunter is going for Rob. Mr. Chef is trying to support him from uh, behind, but now that they are in this side of uh, the map, it's pretty hard for Mr. Chef to provide any more uh, cover for Panzer Hunter. And as you see, Ooh, Bernagy making a big mistake there, peeking unnecessarily, and now he goes from full HP to nothing, and that'll give Hayuni a chance to go in, but Dr. Lapis doesn't really have to even break a sweat to take him down, and Roan is the same against Mr. Chef, so it's a four versus four situation. HP is quite similar, but Deep Tranquility actually have about a K more, and it's getting worse. Yes, and Track is now is being tracked, and Hayuni is coming for him. 505 also help him. Helping him with some shells over there. Ooh, and but gets big pop right now. It, but it's a one versus one, uh, one, versus one exchange. Uh, three tanks still remain for both teams, but look how much more HP Deep Tranquility have. They have a, about a tier eight tank more. Free kills on reload as well. That's going to be a problem. Um, but uh, you look at the kind of lineups, and uh, I just don't see how Momentum's going to deal for, with, for instance, Dr. Lapis, who's on full HP and he's got three shells in that T69. Yeah. It's, it will be it will be very hard for momentum now to you to come back from this situation as they they lock, lack in uh, in HP and they basically need very good position uh, very good positional play they will try to put pressure on the on uh, that uh, on base number two and hope for a DTQ to do a mistake pressure starting to come out from DTQ. Just keeping momentum at bay, keeping them away. Um, they know what a deadly team they can be if they are put into an awkward situation. I like to think of momentum as that kind of wild animal. If you really force it to the bleeding edge, it will strike back and it will kick you in the face. You've proven that time and time again against some of these top teams. You've got to remember that momentum's also a new team. They're and and I think apart from Utopia, they've been one of the better ones. They've been very impressed. But this is the last play, I think, going to come out for Momentum. They're going to go in the cap. But Dr. Lapas with that T69, he's actually reloaded. He's got four shells left. He's got so many options. Yes, and uh, what he's doing right now is going to take advantage of uh, a very good position in, uh, in D4, where you can uh, actually peek with uh, being covered with your hull and uh, no he's actually going a lot more forward this part of the map is very suitable for the t69 so he might as well uh, use uh, all this uh, all this uh, little hills how do you call it in english hills defilades Defilate, mountains yeah. anything and 505 kills free kill and it's pretty obvious where uh, this round is going towards and we see DTQ stepping up with their game and mm. uh, actually I'm surprised this one worked to be honest I mean it's not game over yet Road 
Made a good shell there, and 505 actually gets caught out by Manza, but Heine's in support road, finds 505, and suddenly the momentum are back, but Manza making a huge mistake, fluffing that shot against Hayuni. Heine won't make Hayuni won't make the same one and does find him, but Dr. Lapis should be here to try and clean up. It's one versus two. Rhodes got everything on his shoulders right now. He's doing a pretty good job, but you can see how much damage that T69 can do as its burst is pretty insane. Yeah, and uh, it's a play of cat and mouse right now between Road and Doctor. I can't see Road winning this, but even uh, even then, he will uh, try to do something uh, about it. He will try to come around and probably get uh, high uni, and after that, hope that Doctor is on reload. Where, yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean he's just trying to get farther up that that um, Hall of Fame. I mean if he gets another shell, it's another. <laughs> well, 250 damage there, or if he gets HE, 320 average. So that could be the reason. And, you know, he's got every reason to do that. There's no reason to uh, to um, to suicide. And I think it's a sign of a weak player and a weak team suiciding. You know, never give up, never surrender. It's definitely a motto you got to keep in this game. Otherwise, you know, you won't see those amazing situations we've had this season where teams have come back from being behind. But Dr. Lapos just has the cross and finishes off the final player from DTQ uh, from Momentum and suddenly 3-2 scoreline in favor of DTQ this time. Yeah, well, we are on steps. We are uh, DTQ is on the defensive mm. side, so uh, it's pretty good that they managed to to win at least one uh, round on the defense. Um I'm I can't really uh, say my prediction right now. I'm still waiting <laughs> say to it, see. Say it. Say <laughs> it. You can't predict when the the event has already happened. You got to you got to give it now. Yeah, okay. I'm going to I think 5-3 like for momentum. 5-3 still. Yeah. 5-3. You think the next two rounds at least are going to go to yeah. the next three rounds are going to go to momentum. Yeah. I use an interesting tactic from DTQ. I mean, we haven't seen that one before as they kind of just spearheaded away through the middle. Yeah, but uh, in the same time, I also saw a little bit of miscoordination, mm. especially in, in the end. Uh, they they lost one tank. Yeah, Which man, it could have actually gone back there. Manza, yeah. if he hit that shelling against Hayuni, that would have been two versus two. You yeah, know, and then two happen. versus one for momentum. And yeah. So they're very close. Uh, the levels are very close. Uh, you can see already they're going... Uh, they. One team is winning one round, the other team is winning the other round, and they're going very close, mm. head by head. Uh, and uh, I think that's going to happen furthermore uh, as uh, we advance in the next round. I agree. I mean, it's back and forwards, 50-50. These teams have been so close. I mean, it's been down to a couple of tanks a couple of times now, so it's it's been fantastic to see. I mean, in terms of lineups, we didn't see anything unusual. T69 was actually a massive tank on this map back in the day. Um, it was used on Ensk first. I mean, the fall of the fall of the T69 is a little bit been a little bit upsetting. But before we do head into the next round, let's have a look back at some of those uh, highlight moments of um, DTQ surprising attack on the defense. Yeah, well, that as you said, that was very surprising, and our run didn't manage to uh, to run fast enough to get in cover <laughs> but also uh, it allowed the momentum to get into defensive positions as attackers so i guess a tier six lost for uh, getting in those position it's a little bit of a fair trade true true i did think they would do better in that position when they had that yeah. right cap but it just seemed to fluff it um kind of in that middle of the game but um things need to change for momentum now you said five three um is going to be the final score line yeah I don't know. I, so. I think it's going to be like 5-4. I think DTQ and Momentum are so close and they don't seem to be losing any morale. Both teams seem to be kind of sitting there, sitting straight and not if they lose around, not losing too much confidence, not losing too much like um, ability to play their next round. Yeah, well, if it ends 5-3, I hope I'm going to win a bonus code, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Man, we got, we got bonus codes. It's all good. Yeah. Melly's the queen of bonus codes. Yeah. Um, if you need a bonus code, just ask her. Yeah, true. Well, yeah, we're going into the fourth round. Have you got a type type fifty nine? No, I'm. I don't have a type fifty nine. Good, 59. good. Type fifty nine is is type fifty nine is reserved for special people. Anyone who's got type fifty nine is great. If you haven't got one, you should get one. I you don't want to be we, mean. Let's have more competitions here to get the type fifty nine. That's all I we need to do. I don't want to be mean, man. Special <laughs> people, you say. <laughs> Everyone's got a type fifty nine. Every cool person, at least. No, every everyone which had money in the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you? Oh. No, I didn't buy a Type 59. I uh, I worked for it. Yeah. 
Um, but anyway, let's jump in the game before Alex starts to cry on stream. No one wants to see that. Be the fool. But anyway, <laughs> momentum on the attack again. DTQ on the defense. Three two score lines you can see at the top of your screens. And things are changing up a little bit. DTQ don't seem to be YOLOing through the middle. Yeah, and uh, they actually uh, they actually love to do that, YOLOing through the middle. Um, uh, but now we're looking at momentum. They're uh, taking more defensive positions as attackers. They're not committing that much. Uh, only Alvaron in, in that T-37 is uh, again gathering information. Uh, tries to find out where DTQ is going. If they are doing the same move, that's the best position he can get. And... Uh, to spot if uh, D, uh, DTQ is doing the same move as uh, they did in the previous round. But no, DTQ is actually, wow, keeping it safe a little bit. Do not commit that much in the beginning of the round, changing uh, their tactic. As I said, this is what you expect from, uh, from uh, a WGL team. Yeah, I mean, that middle tactic probably wouldn't have worked twice. Um, and that's exactly why they've changed it. Good point there. But um, Northeastern camp by DTQ is, is the standard. I'm, I was surprised to see the 251 being so aggressive. You can see it's still in C5, so they're clearly expecting that T37 of momentum to go in the cap and uh, get that yeah. one underway. So, I mean, like, you see some teams having to commit that tank, like we saw Utopia having to commit McMoney, yeah. but why don't more teams just put a tank there ready and waiting? Uh, they they want to get the information on the on the cap as soon as the tank goes into the cap, so uh, the opponents don't have enough time to get into positions to focus their fire towards the the tank that is going to spot. So uh, I personally think that it should be a tier six over there and not a tier eight. True. But the RU has a very good mobility and very good speed and can run away very fast. Yeah, the, the, it's certainly one of the faster tanks in the league. Um, surprising, I mean, I guess that's what the German medium and light tanks are all about. A lot of horsepower with quite a heavy, uh, heavy hull. Um, but the T-37 heading up north, but it has been spotted by the Bulldog. This could be trouble for that T-37. And to be honest, this could be um, a big, big crucial blow against OutRun. I mean, T-37 just won't stand a chance against that Bulldog. Yeah, the Mr. Shev versus OutRun. M41 Bulldog versus the T47 and Ooh. what a lock over there from Outrun. Oh, he actually Second set him on fire. Setting him on fire twice. I say that, but then Outrun just hits the back of Mr. Chef twice. And uh, well, one time automatic fire extinguisher takes it care of it. Second time, not so lucky. And he's down <laughs> to a total of four hit points. Manzo chose to peek on him, peek on him but momentum um, has to be careful because Panzer Hunter and High Uni are supporting him. And uh, Manza will definitely pick. He, he just cannot wait <laughs> for the moment to pick. But 505 does that first and gets a lot of damage. A nice little play by the 505. It's actually a game of who can actually head over the tracks first, but it will be momentum heading forward. Manza finds Mr. Chef, as you said, he couldn't wait to head over. But about 700 damage going the way of Deep Tranquility because of that peak. It's now evened up a little bit. Panzer Hunter, great play by him. Finding Manza on the cross there. Road outrun this time heading over. The train tracks aren't going to stop the choo-choo train of momentum. Panzer Hunter falling. Hainu though gets a kill onto outrun. Easy stuff from uh, the side of Deep Tranquility as they are combating momentum and pushing them back and pushing up in the north as well. Burner G, Dr. Lapos going one versus one. Who can win this one out? Dr. Lapos easily finds Burner G and well, Trakis is going to try and head on the back of Kluji as he is on reload. Yeah, well, Trackers needs to get more and more uh, uh, next to the enemies if he wants to commit all his uh, shell. But Rob is now playing a little a little game with uh, two enemy tanks, and he's actually going <laughs> to pick Nicolas back. That was very smart from him. And Hayuni now is on reload, but Doctor still has four shells as he just came out from uh, reload. And Trakas is reloading right now with his T69, so it's a free on two situation. Free kill just came out of reload Ooh. and picks up Hayuni, and Doctor is the last one alive right now. He's going for Trakas, might pick him up. One more shell left, but definitely free kill will come in right now and destroy him one piece after another. Yeah, easy stuff from free kill, no. 
No uh, problems for him at all to pick up the final player of Deep Tranquility, of course, star player Dr. Lapis falling there. And uh, a very messy, a very scrappy game. It was going backwards and forwards a little bit. I think both teams could have won it. What do you think slanted it into favour for momentum? Definitely the duel between the T-47 and that M41 Bulldog. That was amazing play yeah. from Outrun. That was incredible. He's an incredible, that guy's an incredible been, player. That guy's been amazing. I'm surprised he's actually playing that tier 6 because I remember when Deep Tranquility, I'm not sure exactly who they're playing, but it was on... Uh, Monday, I think, he actually got that reset onto the top yeah. of, I believe, Utopia. Uh, Is it Utopia or EPS? One of the two. EPS. EPS, EPS yeah, yeah. He, he got the reset. This guy's insane. Yeah, with a 59-16. With a 59-16, but yeah. let's have a look. As I said, Alvron, an amazing play. Look, look here what he's doing to Mr. Chef. Is He's going to set him once on fire right now, and then... Mr. Chef is very confident that he win the duel, but again, second time on fire, and he just... I'm surprised he even lived out. I mean, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Chef got unlucky to get set on fire twice, but got lucky that he didn't die yeah. four hit points. Unlucky for our run. Yeah, unlucky for our run, and great play from him. Yeah, so that duel between the Borg and T-37, and then Momentum deciding to take him down, taking Mr. Chef down, um, and then starting to peek over there. They lost a lot of hit points, but they won the overall, you know, keeping the gun in the game kind of ethos yeah. kind of duel they had there. So I think Momentum deserved to pick that one up and they do even the scoreboard. Yeah, that's, that, that's good for me because I'm very close <laughs> to <laughs> true, get my true. prediction right. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to see uh, how Momentum plays on the defense right now. It will be very easy uh, for them as defenders. They just have to react wherever uh, they see uh, their opponents coming from. Mm. So... Uh, this basically uh, it's going. To <laughs> uh, well, you say that. I mean, you say that. I think Deep Tranquility were better on the attack on Prokhorovka than they were on the defense. Obviously, since they won both rounds on the attack, so mm. we have to see how this one yeah, goes okay. down. We have to see. I d to be fair, I didn't even make a prediction, so I'm, I'm not sure why I'm arguing uh, with that's that. That's unfair. One. That's sure. unfair. I just me. put it, I just put it on you. On you. I mean, I'm taking Lauren's so place. So if I fail, like oh, I'm taking Lauren's place. I can make. I can put all of her stuff she does to me onto you. Oh, which is great. It's good. Now it's I'm. Fi set. I'm finally in this right seat. It's it's great to be here. You should take it. <laughs> no, I, don't, I think Lauren will. It's gonna. No, just, kick just my switch butt. switch seats. You know, like can't switch seats, man. Ah. Can't switch seats. Host holes have to be on the right. This is TV knowledge. Okay. Um, but anyway, it, next game is coming up. Um, a massive two five one stack from Momentum, going for some yep. sort of EPS style. Yeah, and uh, that Hellcat. Uh, we've seen that uh, Hellcat. Only from momentum, if uh, I remember in the start of the season. Yeah. Only from them. Yeah. And uh, they are still picking it. Uh, it was a good tank, good tank before uh, it was nerfed. But I'm not so sure anymore. It's it it started is now uh, uh, turning uh, very slowly from left yeah. to right or right to left whatever. Traverse speed. Yeah. Traverse speed. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, you just have to use it in a static position. But let's get into the game and see what's going on with the teams. Uh, Hellcat is um, going to be a big question mark on that one. As you said, yep. in those firefight situations, it's going to be very hard for it to actually get its gun turned in that right direction. But it's clear that momentum is going to be putting that Hellcat in like a C0 position um, at some point. But it's an A6 right now. It doesn't even look like it's moved. Um, but uh, momentum with the 251 stack the surprising because they're on the defense so they clearly they just want to go for some EPS they're looking at EPS as an example and trying to take that tactic and make it work on steps but now they are heading right into a trap seeing as DTQ has their tanks uh, stacked up on uh, in uh, G5 G6 just waiting Ooh. for momentum to do it and looks like they're going for it Free kill easily gets dispatched uh, down to about, or gets dispatched finally, and he goes down to Huni. So, uh, Mr. Chef even. So, some back and forwards between the two teams, but uh, Deep Tranquility doing a great job of basically circling in uh, momentum into a very awkward situation. The Hellcat seems to be finally getting in the game, but look how much damage just went the way of Manza. 505 finally finishes them off, and it's been a two for one exchange, but clearly, momentum in the driving seat. Uh, DTQ are in the driving seat. Yeah, well, Doctor with that T49, again, T49 on this kind of map, it's amazing to see to see it in action. But now, Momentum seems like they're almost uh, going to crush DTQ and they're going to the action. Trakis kills Mr. Chef and shells are flying. 
A lot over there, Rube. Oh, a little bit, little bit of miscoordination there as they do <laughs> just crashing into each other. High news on reload, so he can't do anything anyway. Trackers does find it, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, and it's such a scrappy battle. Trackers finding uh, Rube. A little bit of back and forth. Pan's under doing a great job in the background um, with that 59-16 uh, uh, Rube. Trying to get keep his team in this game as it is going the way of deep tranquility in every single respect. Still trying to find Dr. Lapis, but doesn't connect that shell, and that might be the final shell he could do, but does get it unbelievable. Dr. Lapis trying to peek. He has that T49, so he tried to make that high damage shell, but Robe was just too quick. And uh, well, Panzer will finally find him, but DTQ get themselves on the scoreboard, and you, my, my friend, are wrong. So. No. Yeah, well, four, that four was three. really, really good play by uh, DTQ. They actually waited for their uh, for momentum to come after them. I don't understand why they did it. Yeah, as you said, they tried the EPS tactic, but it doesn't work. It only works with EPS. <laughs> Let EPS do it. Yeah, yeah well, that went all very wrong. Went pretty badly. Momentum, yeah. And Doctor doing... 2.7k damage in that round and to be fair like that was almost like they knew what momentum was going to do because that t49 might have not particularly worked in any other situation but because momentum had those two five ones basically yeah. it meant that momentum wanted to go some close quarter battles and dtq had that t49 for that situation yeah well uh, dtq i think at one point uh they were going to push uh towards that base as well so they just didn't have enough time to, to mm. do the, the push themselves. But now, I I just, why? Why? Why momentum? Yeah, I know. I, I know what you mean. I've been there plenty of times <laughs> before. Um, I'm just having a look at the Hellcats damage. It wasn't particularly good that round. Um, yeah, I hit a few shells, but um, it didn't really hold its own. And considering um, we saw the 59-16 of, uh, of Panzerhunter just... Uh, Blowing a few tanks away, and I mean that's the thing. You got these high damage dealing tanks like the 251, the T49, do a lot of damage, but you need a tank like the 5916, which has got that like um, machine gun autoloader yeah. just to finish, gun. just to finish off those last few uh, hit points. Yeah, it's important to have that uh, that gun on that tank if you want to do some damage as well, because you know it, it has two guns available. So mm. I I honestly prefer that gun as well. I do, man. It's insane. Eight five damage. You got five shells there. You can just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like a ten second reload or something insane. Um, so it's it's it can actually keep up. If it had like five hundred more hit hit points, it could almost be a tier eight with that gun there. It's pretty sick. Um, but anyway, um, four three. It's going back and forwards. Do you think momentum's going to keep to trend and? pick up this next round they need to they need to they i think they uh, uh believed uh, that they can do the risk now and they basically don't have that much to lose considering that they are uh, in a good position right now even if they get three or two points or even one it's still good for them yeah okay if they don't get any points then yeah, they played bad and they should uh, really uh, think back at uh, what went wrong in this match. But still, losing to DTQ, I don't think it's... It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal for you, but for in my eyes, I think losing to the last place... like. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, it's not like they lose to a team that's um, like just below them. Like losing to DTQ, giving DTQ points won't make DTQ go above them in the leaderboard. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. like matter in that, that respect. Over, you're right, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you got. I mean, definitely agree with you. Like, you don't want to lose against that last place team because, you know, what does that say to you as a bad team? And I think you know, DTQ is not necessarily a bad team. They've just had a lot of issues, like yeah. a lot of internal yeah. issues in that team. You know, team captain changes, player changes, and I think if they didn't have those issues at the beginning of the season and kind of into the middle of the season, we might have seen them as a top six contender. It's a real shame, and I hope they do get themselves back together again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But uh, look what DTQ did to the school boss when they won against them. True. Uh, school boss was in a pretty difficult uh, situation after that loss. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, exactly. School boss um, have really been feeling the effects up until this day. But anyway, yeah. um, this could be the final round. It's match point for deep tranquility right now. Momentum um, need to kind of get something on the scoreboard. It is four to three, not four to four. Um, yeah. Has uh, well again. 
DTQ on the defensive, on the attacking side, and Memento on the defensive side. Yes, and they're doing the same thing, DTQ. They're just waiting for Momentum to do the initial spot, and Doctor there with a shell not connecting, but 5 of 5 taking so much damage uh, right in the beginning of the round. Uh, they're just waiting for the initial spot from Road, and probably some damage given towards him, and as you can already see, Rhodes, Road receives uh, a couple of shells, probably from that uh, RU, I think it is. Yeah, 251. Yeah, and uh, now momentum is doing what they should have done in the in the first uh, defensive round round from them. Uh, just keep it safe, play it safe, and wait for your opponent to attack as they should. Do. That's exactly what you should be doing on the defensive side. There's no need to kind of throw everything into the wind and uh, you know hope that something happens there. So the rotation. <laughs> well, I say that momentum is now on the rotation. What do you think <laughs> they have in mind? Well. They want to surprise their uh, opponents right now, and they will start starting by Panzer Hunter over here. He gets spotted, and he didn't expect that at all because he didn't even uh, turn the gun towards them. But this, is, trying to this could be bad news for DTQ as um, well for Momentum as uh, you can see DTQ are ready and waiting in the side. Momentum didn't go forward though, so they didn't take any damage. So great pick up there. Yeah, they killed the 5916, which uh, has a very good uh, camo value, and uh, in inside the cap, it would have been very difficult for them to spot it. They would have to uh, they would have to commit uh, a tank towards the cap if they want to spot it. So uh, it was actually a good pick from them. They just have to to go back and wait for the next move from TTQ, which should happen very soon, as time is the essence over here. And the fact that Momentum actually gave up that kind of D1 to D4 area is not a good thing. I mean, that D1 to D4 area has been pretty good. We saw that uh, between Utopia and GG Well Played in the previous matchup. Um, so maybe a little bad play there for Momentum and not keeping that pressure on, not keeping the aggression on, but instead heading back to their caps, heading back to their spawn point and um, waiting for Deep Tranquility to go forwards. But then if you look at it like this, Without that 5916, what can DTQ really do? Um, <laughs> now uh, they really have to figure something out. I would go on the radar, but we see uh, Nicholas Black getting some damage. A lot of dings. He is in a hold down position, so all the shells will definitely bounce, but not that one. Here he sees uh, 200 damage. Unbelievable there. how many shells are bouncing. Around. Yeah, and. Uh, Still, Momentum has those RUs, uh, those 251s. So I think DTQ just listened to what I said, and they're going uh, on the railroad. Uh, Nicolas Black left his position. He might got, get spotted again. He is spotted again, and might receive a lot more damage than in the previous uh, moment. That's what I would do, go uh, on the railroad and try to come from the 679, but, and kill all the tanks uh, over there. Um, but Momentum doesn't have any tanks over there on the Hellcat. Ooh, but they're so. coming for the T69, yeah. Yeah, two, two, two 251s and AMX3090 look at Nicholas Black like a tasty treat. And they do charge on to him, but Nicholas Black isn't expecting it too much. I think he actually was. He was running away. He's got to turn his turret any second now. His turret ring is damaged, so I think Leto might have a little bit of a field day on him. And so will Rode as they come behind. One versus three, and I don't see how Nicholas Black can get away with this one as Rode comes off reload. Lito doesn't find him though, but look how much support DTQ has him behind. Yeah, and the fight is getting a lot more intense right now. I think Lito didn't have to go uh, over uh, the hill of, to get uh, that yeah, high that amount of damage. Un unnecessary, right? And now momentum uh, is falling back. They got the second frag. I'm talking about. I'm talking already in CS:GO terms, frags, uh, the second kill, and uh, they just need to fall back and to wait again for DTQ to do a move. But they are already doing it. They're going for Outrun in that Hellcat. I think Outrun loves to play tier six. Yeah, Outrun's just a tier six boss of the league. But Mr. Chef with HE just finds the back of Outrun, cancels him out of this map, cancels him out of the server, and uh, well, a two for one exchange in favor of uh, momentum right now. And if you look at the hit points at the top, they also have about six to eight hundred, eight hundred more even. And uh, I think their positions are slightly better. They're going to have to put the pressure on in the cap there. Uh, but one minute and forty seconds, not a lot of time 
to do it in. Yeah, and uh, we can see the rest of momentum coming towards the the cap. And uh, I honestly see them uh, winning this duo if uh, uh, if they connect all their shells. But instead, 5 of 5 just denies Lito's chance to, to get closer. Yeah, free kill going in. He just wants to brawl with these big boys in that AMX 1390 charging around the side. Trakis also in there. First one to fall is Dr. Lapis. Who will be next for momentum? Trakis finds 505, but it's such an easy game here for Deep Tranquility as they just absolutely deny momentum all those kills. Kluji misses that shell. That's a disastrous move. And now momentum have the reinforcements. Now they have the damage. And Kluge is on reload. Also will fall to road, and that's a perfect exchange for momentum. Yeah, well, they law they missed too many shells, DTQ. And the Rob, yeah, killed Hayuni as the last kill of the round. Too many misses from DTQ. I'm right. Four <laughs> to five, I told you. I did make a prediction. I'm going to go back on the VOD, send it to you. Where's my prediction? You're, you're new to this. It's all good. You're new, you're new, you're new to this. It's all It's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean... Clearly, momentum, they had a two to one advantage in terms of tanks there, and they just got it right when they pushed in. Well, I, I almost believe that uh, DTQ will win this mm. because uh, uh, at one point they had the advantage. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, I also saw a road too far away from the action, and I was already thinking mm, this will definitely go bad for, uh, for momentum. But in the end, Manza connecting a lot of shells. And a lot of focus fire, very good. And you can see the difference between the 251s and the 1390. Yeah. Uh, at one point, the 1390 had to reload. The 251s didn't have to reload. So they keep on shooting and connected all their shells. So GG for uh, momentum. Yeah, Manza stepping up for his team. Nice 1,770 damage for him. So well played. But tiebreaker map coming up is going to be Muravanka. Um, the admin will be looking through um, the fastest attacking team's round, and whoever has that gets to decide: do they want to go on the attack on Muravanka, or they go on, or, or will they go on defense? What would be your pick? I would go on the defense. I think it's a lot easier to yeah. defend a Muravanka than to attack. Uh, even though, if you as an attacker manage to do the initial kill on that tier six that you usually put the fifth. 59-16 uh, teams usually pick, and you 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 put you put it in the in a good position over there to spot the base base number two. Then, if you kill that tank, then it's pretty easy for you to win the map. Yeah, I mean DTQ is actually the one who's uh, who had the fastest round, two minutes and 33 seconds to wow. momentum's four minutes and 45 f 55 seconds. So it's not even close. So I believe DTQ will be uh, picking the defensive round. We'll update you Definitely. that in a little bit later. But um, whilst we have a little bit of downtime, Melly, how are things going on over there? Is everyone keeping calm? What do they think for this game? Pretty close, right? Well, I, um, definitely. As said, as said beforehand, uh, people at home can't really decide where to put their money on. It's still like this 61% for momen momentum, which is a very slight favor co compared to the matches before, uh, while the vote results. And um, yes, if I search for... Uh, the predictions that goes over three maps, there are actually very few. So a lot of people didn't expect that it's that it will, that we're going mm. full full distance, not even two maps, but going on to the decider. Uh, what is the deciding map today tonight? Muravanka, um, and we're just deciding if uh, DTQ is going to go on the attack or the defense. Okay, cool. So people, what do you think about um, that? <laughs> Sorry. What do you think about um, this matchup? Did you uh, expect it going over f three maps? Well, most of you didn't, since we have the voting results and we can easily check what you guys uh, voted uh, in numbers. And um, just tell me what happened, what went wrong for which team. Use the hashtag WGLEU over at Twitter for um, your opinion. And uh, Oli, we have a question. Mm -hmm. We love questions. <laughs> I know you do. And if you have more, send them over on Twitter using the sad hashtag. Uh, how does, um, well, how do we decide which teams get wild cards for grand finals? That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you to ask. Uh, well, it does say on the uh, news post that it's going to be decided on various factors, including you know, previous results of the team and how good they are. But there's also going to be other factors in there. I mean, we haven't, lock that down 100% or we're not releasing that information yet um, but 
we're very we're, we're pretty far away from the grand finals. I mean, it's just about just about February, and we're going to be having the grand finals at the end of April. So, more information about that will come in the in the few next few months. What were the criteria last year? Um, we don't even know that. Uh, the last year's one was Wusa. They came in as uh, one of the the uh, the wild cards. The other one was Lemming Train. So. I mean, Lemming Train was uh, one of the Polish teams, and Wusa yeah. did well at um, uh, back then WCG. Um, so, it wasn't necessarily the criteria, but that might um, might have been one of the reasons. Okay, thank you very much. So maybe we'll learn more in the near fe future because it's still a bit time until the grand finals. And before the grand finals take place, the season five finals are ahead of us sure. somewhere. In. More information about that very soon as well. Very soon, like yeah. very I'm soon. I'm trying. I'm trying every time to steal some information. She's trying and some, she's make trying him to like coax information out of me. Talk, <laughs> talk, but it didn't work. I'm so sorry. I'll try over and over again over the next. Well, tonight and tomorrow because tomorrow will be our last show, which makes me really sad. That makes me sad as well. Last show for the season, um, but it's been yeah. a great season so far, and we've still got plenty of it coming up. Um, uh, I can tell you right now, Deep Tranquility, going back to this match, has picked up the defensive side. So okay. it's going to make things interesting. Absolutely. So are teams ready yet? or? Yeah, the teams are ready, um, pretty much. Uh, they need to get their tank lineups in. But any other questions, any other things you want to... No, not about? really. But Ding is playing at uh, right in this very moment. Really? So I, I, I Who are they playing wait. against? Wait, wait. I just had it. Um, ASAP? ASAP. Oh. That's... Not a difficult, shouldn't be a difficult match for them. Kay. They played before with ASAP. The ASAP so. were in the, in the last scene as well. Last yeah, season. ASAP. Yeah? Yeah. Well, trying to secure uh, our spot in the WGL EU next season, playing versus ASAP right now. I told them to keep us updated, but mm. I haven't heard from them yet. So probably s the match is still going on. And um, as soon as I get any information, I will of course update you, because those guys are doing really, really well for people that just tuned in. They're one of the top favorites to join the WGL EU about the direct relegation. Is it called like that? Yep. Perfect. Amazing. I can't wait for fresh blood in mm. the... Do we know any of these players? Are they former... I looked through I looked through some of the, the, the rosters. I mean, they're, they're not from the, the players I, I was with, and not from any of the pro teams. They are just a bunch of very yeah. good players that decide to make yeah. a team. Well, there w there are a lot of good players in uh, yeah. in a lot of clans of good good clans that are on the Clan North map. So uh, I'm really glad that we have the chance to see them uh, playing uh, uh, 754. It's really good for for us, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, we need we need new teams, new blood. Yeah, it's we always need a lot good. more. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah I mean. Ding's been very good. I mean, Strong Siemens is also going to be good. It's going to be an interesting uh, Season 6 as well. Absolutely. But the next map will be more interesting for this matchup. But before we head into our third map, which is Murovanka and be the deciding map, we have a little short video for you lined up. Have fun with one of the 8-bit tales. Damn, damn, damn. The same thing every time. There you are, radio operator. No, 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 I hope you like that one. Well, if you want to see more of the 8-Bit Tales, just head over to YouTube and search for 8-Bit WOT and you will be actually finding them, I'm pretty sure. So the radio operator is... Easily killed in the KV-5, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what's, what's, that's what happens there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
You have KV5 as well? Uh, no, I don't actually. <laughs> oh, I was thinking that. I wish I did have a KV5 because it's a good tank. You can buy it. So. Yeah, true. I might well, buy it. Well, not for a radio operator. <laughs> no, I mean, great. the thing is, radio was like right in the center of the turret, I guess. So it's just easy to hit. Yeah. Know. Or no, I guess it might be even that small. Yeah, in that, in small, that one. Yeah. The, yeah, the small uh, R2D2. <laughs> R2D2. Yeah. Okay. They have okay. a little turty thing on yeah. their own. Yeah. The what biggest weak spot known to man. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> that poor guy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but uh, it looks like the teams are getting on the way, so we can finally uh, jump into the last uh, 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 game of this match um, between DTQ and Momentum. You're just joining us. It is 4 all. Um, DTQ had the fastest attacking round, so they will be deciding the side, and they went for defense, unsurprisingly. And are we seeing an artillery right now? We are seeing Panzer Hunt in the artillery. Again. Wow. wow. Well, wow. and also a uh, Borsig, a Rhyme Metal Borsig. Yes. How do you like to call this? <laughs> <laughs> Waffentrager, Waffle Tiger. Waffle? Waffle Tiger. Waffle. You like waffles? I, I do like waffles. I actually had some waffles earlier today. That well, explains it then. Chocolate, <laughs> chocolate milk and waffles. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, yeah, that, this will be very interesting to see how uh, things will go with that uh, Waffle Tiger. Waffle tiger, waffle, tiger, waffle, waffle tiger, tiger. Waffle, yeah. waffle. It's very weird to say to say waffle tiger. Really? I'm I'm really surprised that the the German guys <laughs> didn't come and say hey. Yeah, but that's the reason the German, German guys are the only the German guys are the only ones who can actually pronounce waffen tiger. So yeah, you know, Mel and Melly and Melly and Melly, of yeah. course, German girl, <laughs> only German girl. Um, but who? Anyway, um, weird lineup. Um, very weird. Waffle tiger is in there. AMX 13 F3 is in there. I mean, the 13 F3 is not a big deal, but as we head into game, um, what do you think is really going to happen with it? it they're going to keep it on the uh, in K3, K4 line. Uh, definitely. DTQ definitely will keep that uh, Waffle Tiger <laughs> in that 3-4 uh, line. But rather than that, I'm looking at the lineup and uh, 1390 as uh, a spotter yeah that's the only spotter they have which is not really good if uh, if uh, Mr. Chef dies early on then uh, they will have a really big problem and as you can see he already received one one shell whoa what a miss there from Outrun with that M41 Bulldog um, I'm it's looking pretty good for uh, for a momentum right now because they can put the pressure on the cap I'm not sure if you can spot with that uh, 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 Ryan Metal Borsig, uh, mm. the the cap. Um, if you put binoc binoculars on and mm. uh, probably probably some. It depends if there's bushes in the way. I mean, I guess the Waffen Tiger with the 12.8 is just great damage. Yeah. Absolutely great damage, and also it's got great camera value. So I mean, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. But it's just going to get blown away as soon as it's spotted. I mean, literally within a couple of seconds it's spotted. It's also not the most mobile tank in the world. I mean, it's quite yeah. mobile, but it's just not got a great top speed. Well, they now need the spot on the on the cap, and only Mr. Chef can do it. So if Mr. Chef dies now, then Momentum will really get in advantage. But Doctor is spotted right now, and he is down to 143 HP. Mr. Chef is going forward, and gets the decap. And the thing is uh, with that MX-13 F3, the continue decaps, the continual decaps can happen. They can come up from G Tranquility. So it's going quite well for DTQ right now, surprisingly. Um, it's forced momentum off that cap. They are rotating around with the M41s, the MX-1390, trying to apply some pressure for their team up north. But so far, not doing too well. I want momentum to try and reset this game and maybe come from a different angle. Yes, and uh, they really need uh, this rotation because if they stay very static with this fast lineup, then it will be uh, very easy for DTQ to concentrate their focus fire towards them because they have a heavy setup, so they can't really move around. But they can be uh, overcome only if you switch from one side to another and making them to rotate their very slow turret around. Mm. So, in your opinion, where will where and when will momentum have to make this move? I mean, already two thousand one one point four k one point five k HP deficit with those heavy tanks as well. Um, with having to deal with those heavy tanks as well, I mean, it's looking pretty good for deep tranquility. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I honestly don't don't really 
uh, have any solution to this. It, it, you can't really push right now. You can't get in the middle of them because they have so many heavy tanks that you just get will get smashed very easily. But but they didn't kill Mr. Chef, and that's the main problem because the uh, DTQ still has. Uh, uh, the ability to to spot uh, momentum when mm. they come and look at this look at what's happening right now Ooh, here they go in manza takes the first shell on the side and he takes the second one as well nicholas black beautiful shooting from him and that's the problem with those heavy tanks they really do blow these light tanks away you can see how much damage um that waffen is doing 487 onto the side of the road free kill road trying to do something with this at the moment but he's got to find four tanks yes isn't it one's an amx 13 f3 but it still managed to land a shell onto free kill and honestly Road does bounce one shell, but they really can't do that much as they do head into the pack. That is Deep Tranquility. Finally, Dr. Lapos does manage to take him down. A free kill goes in for the charge, goes in for the ram, but that's not going to do very much. Doctor is on a slither of HP, but it's just enough to stay alive. Outram finds Nicholas back, so he's going back and forwards. Momentum clearly know the weight of this game is on their shoulders, and they need to do something to take it back. Yeah, and uh, basically at this point, there's nothing you can do to come back from this situation. Looking at the HP, the Tranquility has 5k, 5 HP left. Cause of course, that's uh, lowering as uh, Momentum is uh, trying to get more damage done. Leto, Trakis and Auron are the only one alive for Momentum. They, uh, they are pushing Trakis a little bit towards Mr. Chef trying to get uh, into a hold down position but immediately Panzer Hunter amazing shell over there from uh, Panzer Hunter the artillery 505 with a kill on our run and Trakis is the only one left Mr. Chef is going around but not enough time to come out of report reload as DTQ already manages to win. Unbelievable they managed to win that game but you know that's the thing when it comes down to those tiebreakers if you actually pick up a strange lineup like that it can take the other team by surprise and you can win. I mean we've seen it time and time again when you have those heavy tanks you can surprise the enemy team and you could see some mistakes by uh, momentum cost them a lot. Yeah and uh, you got it right? I got it right. I mean amazing. Just amazing. saying. So you guys you see guys <laughs> He has a lot more experience. <laughs> I, I'm, I surprised. Right I'm, a, I'm, so, I'm as surprised as you are, so it's, it's oh, all good. <laughs> okay, okay, that, that makes me feel better. Now. Yeah, I'm just making you feel better. No. <laughs> okay, but let's look back what happened uh, there with Momentum. I'm uh, really eager to see how what went wrong at this push. But Monza receiving a lot of damage in the first moment. And then Road and Freak Kill, they didn't stop right there. And no, just, they probably should have done that. Yeah, and they just went ahead and committed too much to this and in the end they just died it was a very easy uh, job by DTQ but Panzer Hunter again we, we saw that amazing uh, shot from him mm. dealing almost uh, 500 damage towards free kill yeah amazing shot he's been so good in the MX-13 F3 I'm kind of surprised they didn't use it on um, they didn't yeah, use it on um, on Pokrovka so, I mean, a couple of interesting games. It doesn't really change the rankings at all. I mean, if we have a look, you can see that um, DTQ is at the bottom on the four points. They'll get three, which will bring them up to seven, which will put them above Dream Actually, Leprechauns. They, they get, get two, get points, two, sorry. Yeah. So they get on the same points as uh, Dream Leprechauns, you're right. Um, yep. And Momentum gets nine. So it doesn't actually change anything in the rankings, which yep. is a little bit su surprising, but that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And just your general overall impression of the match. Well, it was surprisingly close, mm. uh, but I already mentioned that in the beginning that it will be close after seeing the the first rounds, for the first three rounds. Yeah. Um, it was a good match, actually. It was a very good match. A very good match, yeah. And um, I think uh, I'm really eager to see who is Momentum going to play against, and also it's DRL Kasna. Kasna. against Kazan. Oh, yeah, in the last uh, on Monday. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's very important now for DRL if uh, they're both going to play Kasna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah. So they're probably uh, based on previous results. Yeah. They're both going to lose. So. Well, DRL has a chance right now. True. To avoid the uh, the relegation. They've got to win that match for yeah. sure. And if but so they does win and so get three points. Imagine that. Yeah, they're going to 
yeah, they're going to make a lot of people upset. That's what they're um, going to yeah. do. It's going to be pretty insane. Um, but Kaz and Cruz got to win that match as well, so both will be gunning for it. Um, but that's that's only 50% of today's game's overs, surprisingly. I mean, usually it would be two-thirds of the way through. We still have our next match coming up. It's, of course, the Polish Evil Panda Squad against the amazing Wusa, who yesterday kind of failed a little bit against Kaza Crew. They lost 5-4 to four where they should have won that. And if they did win it, they would have actually got themselves a top six spot. But for that, how is the world of social media going? Um, does it really relate to how the scoring went on the, um, on, on the Facebook poll? Absolutely, because people at home can't, couldn't really decide what we're going to see in this match, as you guys over there. So um, we had people rooting for momentum. We had people rooting um, for DTQ. It's uh, it was all open regarding to the votings. The vote ended with a 61% um, for momentum. Sorry, <laughs> I just well my mind. So today is is going to be a long day. I'll be struggling a lot tonight, so bear with me. I'm so sorry. And I excuse already, so maybe it won't be too bad during the night. So, as said, 61% for momentum, and um, which definitely shows that people at home couldn't really decide where to put their money on, because this is actually a pretty close voting result. We hadn't had such a close one in a few matches, actually. And um, as said, very f even less people we're actually well predicting that we're going over three maps which we did and yes the next vote will be online in a few minutes well pretty much as, as soon as you see this and we will be heading into a short break of five minutes so enough time to follow social media platforms over at twitter and facebook and check in with our youtube channel and maybe if you like it there then just subscribe and get notified as soon as we upload new video content and as said we'll be back in five minutes <laughs> 